Hi, everybody. So there are a few things that we need to discuss today um, in the Jenkins Infra meeting. So the first thing that I want to announce is that um, we officially switched the mailing list from Mailman to the Google Groups. So now every post um, sent to the Mailman, so to the old mailing list, is still accepted, but you should receive a message, say, message saying that um, that mailing list is deprecated and now um, we are invited to use the Google Groups. Um, so we'll keep working this way for the next few weeks and then we will just um, switch the mailing list in readily. So that's the one question I'm not sure if it's been fixed but when it was first set up if you click reply it's set to reply privately it doesn't it's not set to reply back to the um, group yeah definitely I, I changed I changed that this morning uh, based on the comments made by um, RK so now if you reply it reply to the to the whole group so it cool. work. yeah one thing about uh, the current state uh, does it still block messages from uh, non mailing list members uh you mean on mailman on the old mailing list so uh, no, just... on the google groups uh, so on google groups um, now if you at least it was at the state one week ago if you sent a mail from a mailing list uh, from a mail which is not a member of the google group okay. you get bounced so maybe we could uh, allow uh, emails from everyone um i'm fine i'm fine with that it's definitely an option where you can just say uh, if you want to send an email in this group you need to be re registered or not um yeah uh, i just apply the same configuration than the main man by default uh, but uh, i'm totally fine to to not force people to register the mailing list so i'll change that yeah. <coughs> Uh, maybe a related question. Are there are standard uh, infra tickets uh, for Jenkins the Jam mailing list and uh, okay. for other mailman mail uh, ones. Mm -hmm. Do you have some time to handle that? Just close uh, I, d I don't have the time to work on that tomorrow. Uh, but if you if you write uh, a Jira ticket, I can do this either by the end of the week or next week. I mean, it's yeah, Jira tickets were submitted uh, a few weeks ago. That's why I'm okay, just, yeah, just if you can put the, the Jira ticket in the in the Google Notes, uh, then uh, I will find them. So okay, um, I'll do. Um, to submit names. Okay. Um, Here. Um, I, I just take the different point that I specified in the discuss in the topic that I want to discuss. So the next thing is um, I have a working um, a working um, application for the mirrors. So uh, it's currently on repo at Azure Jenkins at IO. Um, the thing is. The idea is either we replace our mirror mirror brain with that new tools mirror bits. Or we have another option, which is using Fastly um, for the CDM to distribute packages. So um, uh, I'm discussing with uh, the OSS team on Fastly side, and they would be interested to sponsor the Jenkins project. And the idea would be to, um, to have a contract uh, the first year, and then we have a contract um, that we renew months after months. So we could use Fastly to, to distribute all packages and also improve the, the speed of our websites like Jenkins.io and plugin sites. Um, but I still have to plan um, a meeting with them. Um, so that's the current state. So either either, either uh, the Fastly solution works and then I stop working on mirrors or um, Fastly, I mean, does not work, and then we have to replace Mirror Brain with, for example, Mirror Bits, which seems to be working very well and um, in scale well better than the current solution. And so, if we if we, if we switch with Mirror Bits, we could just, for example, enable HTTPS mirrors and just drop HTTP by default. I think for the users, though, the CDN would be a much nicer experience. It'd be a lot, it'd be a lot faster. Uh, fastly, definitely, yeah. 
Fastly, fast, I mean, Fastly will be the best uh, solution because right now we don't have a lot of mirrors and all the people who asked to, 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 to sponsor, I mean, to provide the mirrors in the, the past few years, we each time said that we want to use the CDN and we don't want the mirrors approach anymore. But now that you have to pay for the infrastructure, uh, the mirrors approach is way cheaper, obviously, than the CDN. Um, so I have the feeling that if we can if we can work with uh, Fastly, then at least for the next year it will be uh, better. Okay, um, that was regarding uh, the mirrors and Fastly updates. Um, regarding another thing that we discussed several weeks ago, which is enable third-party access restriction on the Jenkins Info Organization. So right now, any person who want to use the GitHub, for example, to integrate with a third party, by default have access, um, by default provide access to the Jenkins organization, Jenkins Info organization. So an example of that is Gitter or Sentry. And so because we never configure that um, a restriction on the Jenkins Infra side, um, it means that by default um, we, we allow uh, every accesses and so the idea would be to put in place some restriction but once we do that all the token that we generated on the Jenkins infra will be broken this means that we need to take some I mean, to have enough time like in the days to, to review all the application and be sure that we renew all the tokens so this is something that I would like to work on next week something like that do you have any experience with that No, yeah, so this is something that should be coming in the coming uh, days. Um, the second, the next topic is regarding the Rackspace sponsoring. So as you saw, apparently Rackspace stopped sponsoring uh, OSS projects. And so now we have to pay for one of the machines that we have in the Rackspace account, which is Okra. And that machine is used for archive the jenkinsci.org, which is our um, fallback uh, service for um, our packages. Um, the thing is, that machine is totally maintained, uh, managed by puppets, so it would be trivial to move it to, to move that machine in our Azure account and then configure it there. Um, Anyway, in the current state, it's just like we stop paying Rackspace to pay Microsoft if we do this, because in the end, we are paying now for Microsoft. But at least it will simplify the billing process, because right now it means that KK has uh, to be reimbursed from this SPI. So um, it will just simplify this management. Uh, it will simplify the management from a KK point of view. And so I think it would be really trivial to move it. So um, this is something that we should work in the, uh, the coming days. Um, any question on this specific topic? Yep. Um, otherwise, regarding, the, we have um, several work happening on the Jenkins Infra slash Azure account. So this is where Tim just spent some time. So uh, if you want to explain all the work that you did recently on that, uh, on that uh, thing. Um, so done a couple of bits recently. One was to um, try to up upgrade the Terraform that's used on the Azure repository. Um, just so that we can clean it up a bit and fix some of the issues. Um, I don't think it hasn't been upgraded in quite a while. And the other is to start looking at Packer images um, so that the Azure VM agents can start up quicker um, and so that they can be upgraded easier as well. So yeah, this is really nice, but, but yeah, that's really nice. The, the only thing that we have right now is because we uh, stopped um, building um, the Terraform code from CI the Jenkins .io, it means that we have to manually trigger it and be next to the to the job to be sure that everything is working fine. So I think we should split the, um, the Terraform codes for non-critical resources that can be updated automatically. And if it's uh, deleted by mistake, it's fine. And for example, um, don't delete by mistake like Kubernetes cluster. So, because right now it's not really, uh, it's not any more transparent, so it's not easy to see. Uh, there's there's too much is. stuff there. Yeah, so I think we should definitely try to, to split that repository in different repositories. So for example, what I have in mind is all the part regarding the DNS configuration uh, could be easily automated and generated, for example, from CI the Jenkins.io, for example. Um, so yeah. In, system, yeah. In your mind, Olivier would would CI to Jenkins IO then have the ability to mutate those resources in Azure? 
So either, either we could do that or we could redeploy a, a smaller Jenkins instance inside the VPN so we can delegate the access to someone. So all the people who have access to the VPN can um, change the infrastructure. Mm -hmm. But yeah, the thing is, for example, um, there are some resources like, I mean, I just said the DNS. If the DNS mm -hmm. is deleted, monitoring will complain and it will, be, it will be really easy to redeploy, which is definitely not the case for machines like the VPN or Kubernetes clusters or whatever. So there are, there are resources that where we need validation to change them. Yeah, I, I agree with that point. I don't know with, with the service principle that we create for Terraform how granular of access we would be able to delegate. Because right now Terraform is using uh, an app and service principle that basically gives it root inside of the Azure account. Yes. Um, if we were able to, to create the service principle such that um, that Terraform pipeline would just be able to access Azure DNS, then I think that would be totally, that would be fine. I agree with your point there. Uh, my only concern is if that credential can be used for mutating yep. other resources. Yeah, so, so, so you raise uh, a valid point now, uh, which is the way we manage the, the access. And right now we have a really basic uh, way to manage it. So, we, so basically we just use a basic group in Azure. So either you have access or you have admin access, or whatever. And if we want to have a better control of who has access to what, uh, we should probably um, use a better, a better version of the Azure uh, Active Directory, which will cost us a um, few bucks, but I think it would be better to delegate the permission. And so, for example, would, we would be able to just say you have access to the Kubernetes cluster, for example. Um, so, yeah, this is something that I think we should work on. Yeah, I think it would be very good and to be able to do fine growing access control. Yeah, because right now it's really like you have access to everything or you have read only access. So our, our only the, our, sorry, I already gave read only access to few people, but yeah, those are really trusted people. Uh, who, oh, yeah, so I really, I, I really think we need uh, fine grain control of who, have, who has access to what. Um, so I think I still have to create a ticket for that specific thing. Um, Yep, uh, I now realize that I totally forgot to, to also mention something regarding the, um, the, um, the infrastructure and the way um, you're paying it. So basically, um, the CDF agreed to pay the bill for our infrastructure um, for the next six months, but we need to go uh, below the 10K per month. So they, they accepted to temporarily pay the 20K per month, but we definitely need to reduce the the cost of our infrastructure so if if um yeah if we have some monies from amazon it will be already easier to manage but yeah we have we have to find some ways to reduce the cost of our infrastructure and sometime uh, of course means may because from what i heard it's uh, six months yeah so december january february march april may yeah so the plan is may um, I, yeah Olivia, you mentioned in, in the chat, and we've talked a little bit about this before, setting up uh, AKS or, or having uh, agents spin up on Kubernetes. Um, do you think that should be done before or after we convert CI Jenkins IO into configuration as code? I think it should be done after. Because we are, I mean, right now our Jenkins file are designed to be running and using Docker, Docker directly running on, on machines. So I think it would be just easy, it would be just easier to use the EC2 plugin deploy machines, and so it will it will reduce the cost on our Azure accounts. Um, and at the same time, we should also work on the configuration as code. So then the other people can just refactor or maybe use specific labels for specific repository or whatever. But uh, yeah, we, we should just switch from um, Azure VM to EC2 instances. My main concern is about like um, using uh, the Artifactory because we saw in the past that sometimes we have some latency between um, cloud providers. 
but uh, otherwise, yeah, this, this is everything. So basically, for years, we had the master running in Amazon and the agent running in Azure. And now we have the master in Azure and we are <laughs> moving the agent to, to Amazon. So yeah, that's, that's the only thing that I'm concerned. But um, yeah, it will be just easier to just use AC2 plugin. And otherwise, that's pretty old for me. I don't know if you want to, to talk about something specific. Have you heard anything about the certificate for the automated release? So that's a good question. And last time I checked, it was no, not yet. Um, so yeah, no, no news on that side. Uh, again, I, I should check. So usually I just being in the, yeah, in the CDF like. Yes, yeah, I, I saw you asked a couple of weeks ago and no response. Yeah, yeah since 6th of February, so no response. Um, yep, this is something that I should ping him directly. So basically, if we have to talk about the automated release now is because we use the cluster, initially we deployed the automated release environment on a Kubernetes cluster that we also use now for all the public application. So we have to deploy a new Kubernetes cluster in a private environment and just use for trusted application. Um, so we have to redeploy in a cluster and redeploy the environment in a more secure VPN and more secure network. That's the only thing that we need to do. And we still have a few things that we need to, to work on. So um, for the release parts, it seems it's working. For the packaging parts, we still have to work on the way we publish artifacts. And so this will be mainly influenced by the fact that um, if we have Fastly, we don't have to handle mirrors. Um, so yeah, the, the way we will distribute packages is not really clear at the moment and should be better I mean, in the coming weeks. Um, in, in, in a similar vein, and Tim, thanks for mentioning the release certs because I hadn't, I had forgotten about that. Um, I've been watching Kosuke and JFrog <laughs> go back and forth about Artifactory. Um, I had also seen an alert around JenkinsCI.org certs expiring. Um, and I don't know if that was... They, we've got two sets of, of manually created certs that we've we've made in the past. There was the wildcard JenkinsCI.org certificate, and then there was the Artifactory certificate. So it looks like so Kosuke's already created the repo JenkinsCI.org certificate, correct? Uh, yes, for that one he already created, and normally it should be already configured as far as that's concerned. And otherwise, the other certificate is for LDAP. Um, Mm. The LDAP service and the, the reason to this is because when I refactored the LDAP uh, container, I used um, the static configuration. So if we want to have dynamic certificate like generate with Let's Encrypt, which is something that could be working now, um, because so because in the past we were using the HTTP um, method to generate certificates, so the certificate yeah. Be, Available now, we switch to the DNS01 method so we can have certificates even in private environments. So, we could have a, a certificate for LDAP the Jenkins, uh, that IO, but we need a way to, um, to inject that configuration in the LDAP container. So, um, theoretically, it's possible to use with a new uh, LDAP configuration, but they totally changed the syntax, and I don't know it very well. So, so what I'm really getting at is uh like, do we need to go buy more certificates? Because I think the expiry that I saw in, a, in an alert was the 15. Um, just, yeah, no, normally those are the only two certificates that you need. So I just have to check for the, for the adapt one. I didn't know that it was a white card. I thought it was just adapt the Jenkins that I owe. But I have to check for it. Okay. Um, if... Will you let me know tomorrow or something, and I can go buy the certificate and and put it in the right place if we need it. When when is the deadline? I think it the alert that I remember seeing said the fifteenth was the expiry. Okay. Um, but I couldn't find that alert if I tried right now. Okay. Okay. Um, okay, so I guess we are good now. So um, if you don't have any other things that you want to discuss, we can stop the meeting here. Um, 
has has anybody discussed with developers about moving away from this JFrog online service, or are we just going to leave it as is? Why, it why, is there any is there any reason why you want to move away from that service? I mean, for me, it does it work? Um, and it Do we get the certificate installed? It wasn't clear to me that it was. It's installed. not. Been, it's, it's not been installed. <laughs> I, yes, I agree. Artifactory has actually worked very well, except when we have to ask them to do. <laughs> we we went through this same exact same problem the first time when we installed the or got the or first certificate. And so they they clearly haven't got, gotten any better. But by three year certificates, not two years. <laughs> I I, th I thought that I thought that because uh, we gave both uh, new certificates uh, instead of the let's encrypt one, so I thought that it was solved. They didn't manage to figure out. Uh, yeah, they couldn't. Th they couldn't update it without the key, and they wanted them to send them the key. Yeah. There's, they whoever is working in Artif or in JFrog support clearly doesn't understand how certificates work. No. Mm -hmm. I have to review that. It's not something like there's not an emergency here. I don't think we need to run away screaming from Artifactory, but no, but it, but the, the recent history show us that we need to take, to work on that quite in advance to be sure that the work yeah. is done for the deadline. So yeah, anyway, we have we have to figure out. Uh, uh, Tim, you're just looking at that certificate. It seems like do you know when it expires? No, I'm just just looking at it from KK's email. I think it was March. Right. It started quite early. Let me look at it. Just pulling it up. It's by March 2nd. Okay. Yeah, March 2nd. Yeah. Which is not that so, far away. No, it's it's closer than I thought it was. <laughs> um, okay, well, I, I guess to me what it sounds like is if somehow JFrog cannot get their shit together, that we might want to uh, send an email to the dev list to let them know that there may be, they may see an expired certificate and it's okay, don't freak out. Well, before it happens, uh, I think we can escalate it within JFrog. Because yeah, if I needed, think... we have ways. <laughs> we we <laughs> have ways. <laughs> <laughs> there's, there's always Twitter. Yeah. Uh, something yeah. like that, yes. Uh, yeah, we have better ways than Twitter. But, um... Are you sure? <laughs> Yes. I find Twitter tends to be the best way. Thank you. I think I think the CloudBees executive should have some direct lines to JFrog. Yeah, well. probably. <laughs> They're all in the same WhatsApp group. <laughs> okay, so I propose to stop the meeting here and go back to RSC. Um, if you free to add any topic that you want to discuss next week in the Google documents. Um, okay. And I will yeah. upload the video as soon as possible. See you later. Bye. Bye. Bye.